Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth, back to Revelation. And today we are 6 through 11. Now, if you remember yesterday, we were looking at the churches. Uh, so we saw a lot of different um, warnings, uh, a lot of different compliments. So I guess compliments and caution uh, about each of the churches. So we looked at that. Uh, we looked at the throne room of heaven uh, and the Lamb. Um, and uh, we saw a little bit, I want to say we saw a little bit on the seals as well. Uh, we're going to see more on the seals today. Uh, the opening of the seals, the multitude of the great tribulation, uh, the seven trumpets, the little book and mighty angel, and the witnesses killed and resurrected. So we're going to look at um, the uh, kind of interesting dealings with some of the witnesses there. I think we have two of them. So I will look at that again in chapters 6 through 11 of Revelation. So, chapter 6. Now, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering, and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the living creature say, the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed after him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and, and by the beasts of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, as a fig tree drops its late figs, when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place, and the kings of the earth and the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. And he said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the, la the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Chapter 7. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I heard another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth and the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of, the, of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. One hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Of the tribe of Judah, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, twelve thousand were sealed. Of the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all the nations, 
tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, and to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures who fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out for the great tribulation, and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger nor more, nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to the living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Chapter 8 When he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given the seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden, golden altar, which is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and earthquake, and an earthquake. So the seven angels, who had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass burned up. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain, burning with fire, was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. <clears throat> And a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the angel, then the third angel sounded. A great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. It fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound. Chapter 9 Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the, to, the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And smoke arose out of the pit like smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree but only those men who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will, seal, will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and escape will flee from them, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like faces of men. They had hair like a woman's hair, and their teeth were like a lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stingers in their tail, stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past. Behold the two more woes that are coming after these things. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four corners of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had trumpet, 
who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the river Euphrates. So the four angels, who had been prepared for the hour and day of the third month and year, were released to kill a third of mankind. Now, the number of the army of the horsemen was two hundred million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke of their brimstone, which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their heads are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do no harm. But the rest of mankind, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their beliefs. Chapter 10. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and his rain a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. He cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which these which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. The angel, whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land, raised up his hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and all the things that are in it, the earth and all the things that are in it, the sea and all the things that are in it, and there should be no delay, there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the, se on the second, on the sand, excuse, sea and, sea and, and on the earth. Sea and on the earth. Sorry, it's my first day reading. <laughs> um, so I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take it and eat it. And it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Chapter 11 Then I was given a reed, like a measuring rod. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months, and I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy one thousand two hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemy. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have the power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy, and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them, and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then, those from the peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and make merry and send gifts to one another because the two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now, after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and a great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here and they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. At the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. 
Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on the thrones, on their thrones, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets, and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple, and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hail. So that's... um incredibly powerful stuff. And I'm not going to pretend that I understand all of it. I think there's a lot of stuff in here, um, which is difficult. Sometimes there's some, there's some challenging stuff in here. And I think it's because there's that reminder that, that, yeah, we know that heaven and hell exist. And we know that angels and demons exist. We know that Satan exists, that God exists, that Jesus exists. Um, we know that, but I think often we, we build our framework around that and we forget about the spiritual realm that is massive and fully at war. And it is so interesting to hear that. I mean, you hear so many different people when they get visited by angels uh, in the Bible, you hear them fall on their faces and they're terrified. I used to just think that angels were, um, I don't know, people just dressed in white, maybe, uh, maybe with a beard to kind of fit in. I think that's how they're often depicted. But I think there's also a reason that they fall on their faces. Now, it could be a recognition that this is a holy being, uh, a holy being with which they they fall completely prostrate on the ground um, for fear of death before a holy God and recognize that these angels come from a holy realm. Um, or it could be that, again, you see different depictions of angels as really interesting spiritual beings that man has never seen before. And this is a great reminder of that, of the spiritual things that we haven't seen before. So uh, it's much bigger than what we see. Anyway, that is uh, what I took away from today. As always, friends, thanks so much for joining. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you.